Next up, I'd like to bring up Richard Cody Nichols to talk about, oh, <laughs> where did I put my glasses? Uh, Richard Cody Nichols will be speaking about Commander in Cheese, a story of Andrew Jackson, murder, and cheese wheels. Everything you hear tonight, believe it or not, is true. In 1802, Elder John Leland presented Thomas Jefferson a 1,235-pound wheel of cheese, bearing the inscription, Rebellion to Tyrants is Obedience to God. It was made using the milk of 150 non-federal cows, because if federal cows were used, then, quote, it should leaven the whole lump with a distasteful savor. <laughs> this wheel of cheese presented to a president is not what this presentation is about. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson was not the first to receive a wheel of cheese, but before I get to the cheese, context is needed before we arrive. <laughs> cheese. Andrew Jackson, born March 15th, 1767, seventh president of the United States. Uh, he was a whiskey-drinking, hell-raising lunatic who was elected president. He waged a personal war against the British. He fought, on, he fought an assassin, threatened to behead John C. Calhoun, and almost destroyed the White House on two separate occasions. Called Old Hickory, but known as uh, Sharp Knife to Native Americans, he is kind of their Hitler. He joined the army at 12. Uh, he was kidnapped by a British soldier. And at one point, the British soldier told Andrew Jackson to shine his shoes, to which Andrew Jackson replied, fuck off. <laughs> the soldier pulled out his saber and slashed him in the face. 12-year-old <laughs> Andrew Jackson fought him off, but he still kept that scar the entire rest of his life. Earning the name um, Old Hickory in battle due to how stubborn he was and how he would never yield, much like a hickory tree, um, in 1814, the UK invaded Louisiana, and General Jackson had been waiting 30 years for a reason to murder every single one of the Brits. <laughs> he was strict, short-tempered, but his willingness to suffer alongside his men made him extremely popular. Due to his ferocity, the British withdrew. This lovely lady is Rachel Donaldson. She uh, was originally married to a cruel man by the name of Captain Louis Robards. Um, she was, they got divorced and then she hooked up with Jackson and then she found out that there was this weird loophole where technically she and Roberts were still married. And because of that, anytime Jackson was at a bar, people would comment on this and like, well, Jackson, you married a whore. How's that going for you? Jackson was very short tempered and often his reply would be, okay, dueling at noon. <laughs> this gentleman right here is Charles Dickinson. He's gonna come into play later. Andrew Jackson was in 130 duels in his entire life. <laughs> With this gentleman, there were an escalating bunch of events due to, at first, uh, bets made on a horse race, and after a bunch of arguments back and forth, Dickinson decided to publish an article in the local paper about how terrible Andrew Jackson was and how much of a terrible woman his wife was. And did you hear that she's still technically married to someone else? We're dueling at noon. <laughs> Now, Dickinson was considered an expert marksman. So, Andrew Jackson and his buddy came up with a plan. Traditionally, you take 10 steps, you turn at the count of three, and you both fire. Jackson decided to let him shoot first, thinking that if he did this, he'd be so flustered by having this much power, he would miss. There is a flaw with this plan if it goes wrong. It went wrong. Uh, <laughs> Dickinson shot him squarely in the chest. Jefferson somehow survived. It was a couple inches from his heart. And he slowly starts loading his pistol while his buddies are yelling at him, saying that that's very cruel to just draw this out. But he's like, no, no, no. He wants to run his mouth. And he slowly aims it, fires, shoots him right in the throat, and he dies instantly. Jackson spent the rest of his life with that bullet along with other bullets from duels in his body to the point that White House staff were often known to say you would hear him before you saw him because he sounded like a bag of marbles being shaken. <laughs> Every now and then in the middle of a meeting, he would start coughing up blood because the bullets would be moving around in his body. Now we get to presidency. 
Now, as many people might expect, everyone would want to vote a wonderful man like this into the White House. <laughs> oh, we're getting there. Trust me, we're getting there. Now, there used to be a policy that is probably a good idea that we got rid of, that there was an open door invitation on inauguration day where anyone can come visit the president. Before Jackson, um, usually it was rich, fancy, fancy people wanting to come congratulate the president. But Jackson was considered one of the regular guys. Because you hear about that duel that he was in? Also, many people thought that was very improper that he shot a man while making him wait. So they said, that's not the proper rules of murder. He threw this party. The proletariat came through and swinging on the chandeliers, rubbing food into the carpets, smashing windows and furniture. Secret Service told Jackson that they needed to get him out. He crawled out through a window. The only way they were able to get everyone to leave was by putting the barrels of beer on the front lawn. <laughs> and naturally, they go where the drinks are. Andrew Jackson also has the honor of being the first president to have an assassination attempt. Um, this gentleman by the name of Richard Lawrence, he was convinced that um, he was the deposed King of England, Richard III, who had died in 1485, and he needed to kill the president. So he came up with two pistols, put one right in his chest and shot, and it didn't go off. Grabbed the other pistol, put it right in his chest, shot, it didn't go off. Jackson yells, my cane is always loaded, motherfucker, and begins to beat him. <laughs> this is true. Davy Crockett was in the audience and had to come up to pull Jackson, along with Secret Service, are pulling Jackson off of the assassin because he almost killed the assassin, which made me make this wonderful meme here. You need this context to understand, because now, my friends, we get to the cheese. <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for. Colonel Thomas Meacham of Sandy Creek, New York, in 1835, <laughs> he decided, well, anything Jefferson gets should be given to Jackson. He gets 900 cows of his local town and makes a 1,400 pound wheel of cheese, four feet in diameter, two feet thick, with a giant belt that says the union, it must be preserved, with a carving on the cheese of his face. It was too heavy to carry on a regular coach, so they had to carry it on sled. Eventually, they built a custom wagon for this thing that was drawn by 48 horses. You don't make a 1,500 pound wheel of cheese without people hearing, so it took on kind of a national tour as it made its way to the White House. Honey, honey, the cheese is coming, come out! <laughs> he also made many 700 pound wheel of cheeses to give to other people, such as Martin Van Buren, Daniel Webster, and other politicians. Um, Daniel Webster was given the uh, 700 pound wheel of cheese at one point when the cheese was doing its tour. He's like, oh, you're here. He just handed it to, to him. He's like, thanks. Now, my friends, through years of research on this subject in consultation with many historians, I've actually pieced together through photographic evidence and wax cylinders an actual video recording of Andrew Jackson's reaction upon receiving the Wheel of Cheese for the world's viewing pleasure. This is Andrew Jackson's exact reaction upon receiving the Wheel of Cheese. His actual reaction Upon thanking them, he shut the doors, turned to his staff, and yelled, what the fuck? <laughs> Keep in mind, his wife has just died. He wrote a very thankful note, but he, the cheese was the last thing on his mind. He told the staff, you know, anyone can eat it. Just kind of grab some pieces whenever you want. I really don't care. <laughs> he gifted many portions of that cheese to friends. That was the typical Jackson Christmas gift for a few years to come. <laughs> but it sat in the White House for years. People could smell it from blocks away. <laughs> One gentleman described it as, quote, a foul, evil-smelling horror. <laughs> Eventually, toward the end of his presidency, he needed to get rid of this cheese, so he calls the same crowd who came to that inauguration day in 1837 and put an ad in the paper saying, please, everyone, come eat this cheese. It's a party, free food, anyone come by. 10,000 people showed up, and it was gone in two hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, there has been no party since then that has come close to uh, this craziness of food, although some have tried. <laughs> the 
the succeeding president, Martin Van Buren, he said that it took him weeks to air out the carpets and the curtains. He had to whitewash the walls and repaint the entire Oval Office. And he was not aware that Jackson had gone to that same dairy farmer and had him make another 700 pound wheel of cheese that he hid inside the White House for Buren to find, which he did <laughs> months later, which he auctioned off to charity, which Jackson should have done in the first place. Uh, Andrew Jackson died in 1845. When asked what his regrets are, he said, that I didn't shoot Henry Clay and I didn't hang John C. Calhoun. But in fairness, if you look at a photo of John C. Calhoun, you can understand why you'd want to hang him because he looks like, <laughs> he looks like a soul-stealing possessed Muppet. Um, now, I couldn't find any photos of this, but Obama in 2014 threw a cheese party in honor of the anniversary of the cheese shindig with Andrew Jackson. I couldn't find any photos of that, so I just used this instead. <laughs> one, last thing, one last thing before I end. Um, at Andrew Jackson's funeral, his pet parrot had snuck in, and he had taught his pet parrot to swear. They had to end the funeral early due to the fact that the parrot would not stop screaming swear words at everyone present. So I end with this wonderful thing. A friend of mine recently visited the Hermitage. They offer an audio tour for adults and an audio tour for kids. The audio tour for the kids is narrated by the parrot. <laughs> and at the end, it says, when my buddy Andrew Jackson died, I, I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> And we were dying with tears in our eyes. I propose a toast to Andrew Jackson and to gift giving. When you give a gift to someone that you care about or don't care about, make sure it lingers in their memories, make sure it lingers in their hearts, and make sure it lingers in their noses. Thank you all very much.